everyone. Welcome back to another video. Uh, my name is Austin, for those of you who don't know, and today we will be reacting to episode 8 of Mumbo Jumbo's experience on the Hermitcraft server. If you like this video, please go show Mumbo Jumbo some support. He's a very, very uh, excellent content creator. Um, there's really many other words I could use to describe how good he is. Um, but if you also like this video, um, please support me um, if you would like by liking the video um, and by subscribing if you really like the video as well. With that being said, let's begin. I've been reading through the comments and people keep saying the same things about my base plans. Okay, that the same word keeps being brought up. People are saying that my base plans look sus. Now this is not a word that I'm particularly sus. familiar with, but I've done a little bit of googling and I found out what you're all talking about. Now that I've gotten a little bit older, you know, I don't really keep up with the cool abbreviations that kids are using these days. But now I understand that you're all calling my base sustainable. SUS is an abbreviation of the word sustainable, and we are going for a sustainable, eco-friendly base. We're all about the peace, love, and plants over here. So I can confirm that my base is absolutely 100% fully SUS. And actually, <laughs> when we're talking about bases, I can't help but notice that there is, there is a little border. We have got a dot and dash next to us. How far away are they? Okay, we have got, we've got neighbors. So we've got, we've got Green yeah. as the neighbor, and then we also have nice. what I imagine is Impulse. Because Impulse is the only person on the server who would use gold blocks as his method of marking out the outside of his base. Well, this strawberry lace is not good enough for you, eh? You had to go for, for butterscotch, did you, Mr. Impulse? If he was online, a standoff would have been initiated. I wonder if Harmless Harvests has brought in any diamonds so far. Okay, we've got, so we've got two diamonds there. My goodness, this is the most successful shop I've built in years. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're in double digit. We're in double digits, fellas. And it continues. 11 diamonds. Two ones. What's the what's the word? What's the thing that you say? Legs 11. 11 is called 1e1. <laughs> We have 11. That's a completely stupid phrase. The number 11 doesn't even look like legs. Anyway, I have a literal trillion resources to gather up for the construction of my new mega base. So I guess we should start off the episode with a little bit of that. What? 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 I mean, I'm going to have to send him this face. <laughs> Just to explain what happened there, I asked Green if I could borrow one of his beacons, and then he came up with a fresh beacon and a bunch of emerald blocks for me. I am eventually intending on killing a wither myself, but for the time being, just gathering the wither skulls is the challenging bit, but I do have a few ideas in mind. With that being said, this temporary little rental is going to be very, very useful indeed. Let's gather some serious bits and bobs. And that means it's time for a super high speed resource gathering time lapse. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I struggle to think of many hey, things that are satisfying there. to watch than resource gathering time lapses. Maybe I'm weird. I, I could be weird. I, in fact, I'm definitely weird for many reasons, but I feel like this isn't one of the reasons why I'm weird. I feel like everyone could watch these, even if you don't play Minecraft. There's something about watching a large area get removed, just things getting cleared out. It just, it goes straight to that satisfaction part of the brain. It's right there. It just lights it up on fire. I love it. I can watch it on repeat. Bits and bobs have been gathered. So we have got two double chests or two and a half double chests, five, five chests. Of grass. People always get annoyed at me when I refer to single chests as being half double chests. I, I can understand why that is a bit daft. It's like when I refer to stone slabs as being stone half slabs, that would technically be half of a slab, which would make it a quarter slab, but still I continue. Honestly, your pain gives me pleasure. Speaking of pleasure from pain, I would love to kill this guy, but I can't. I'm a changed man. <gasps> oh my goodness, he heard me. He heard me. He's just despawned. Anyway, I'm now down in this massive area that I've cleared out. I have no clue what I'm going to do with this area. Probably nothing, but it seems a shame to waste it. If anyone thinks of anything cool, then I might just do it. But this is where the main resources were gathered. We've just got loads of stone and deep slate, which I'm going to be using to create our gigantic landmass. So I should probably run people through what the actual plans are. And I'm starting to realize that this is absolutely nowhere near big enough. Uh, it needs to be probably a bit bigger. And before the headache begins over there, I need to return this beacon to Grian. That likely saved me about four extra hours. And now the planning truly begins. Okay, so the idea is, for those of you who didn't watch the previous Hermitcraft episode, this right here is going to be a big land mass. So we're going to build up a land mass here. And then that white concrete circle there is going to be 
a decent quantity of the exterior of the base. So that's going to be wrapping around the landmass. Exterior. Going together. <laughs> it's going to look very fancy. That makes it sound like I have an official plan. I don't. I have three tiers of an idea <laughs> for how I think this is going to come together. But realistically, I only have like an image in my head of what this looks like. And that image in my head came from a picture that I'd seen on the internet. And this is that picture rendered in Cinema 4D. Now, wow. just a little backstory here. I've had to go digging for this image <laughs> because I saw it ages ago and kind of forgot about it. Then at the start of season eight, there was like this foggy memory in the back of my brain that just came to the forefront of it when I was thinking of base ideas, but I could never find the image. And over the past few days, I've been looking for it. I finally managed to find it, and it is as gorgeous as I remember. This is so, so cool. It's created in oh, a program yeah. called Voxel Made, and the person who actually designed this structure, Ex Machina, is the person who made Voxel Made. So, huge credit goes to him for not only creating a beautiful program, but also this beautiful structure. And I'm so, so chuffed that I finally found chuffed. this reference image. So let's start getting some form of skeleton all in place. The this is like a that... very very rough uh, frame guide from the UK of what use. the build is actually going to be shaped like. But already, as you can see, the scale, yeah, it's going to be quite big. It is going to be quite big. So this is like one of the arms of the armchair that I'm going to, that's how I'm going to refer to it from this point forth. So we'll have each of the armchairs there and then we'll have the big land mass behind it with the water trickling down. Those are all elements that I want to keep from the original reference image. It really reminds me of a place called Mantayupan Falls in the Philippines, which is honestly one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. If I remember, I'll add some pictures of that on the screen right now. If not, this is going to be a very long black screen. I think one element of the skeleton that I'm kind of struggling with is that my brain is smoothing out the gaps between the wireframes. So the idea of this build is I kind of want to keep that bouldery essence, the idea of like rocks being stacked on top of one another. But in this wireframe, this, is all being smoothed. All the gaps between is being perfectly smoothed round, which means it's losing some of that look. With that being said, I do think we've got the scale about right. I just want to add some extra boulders and details along the bottom that kind of build it outwards a little mm -hmm. bit when it comes to actually constructing it. As you can probably tell, I'm feeling very out of my depth here. I would say this second one is looking considerably more boulderous. If that is even a word. And in response to the creation of the second one, I thought I would also add some more boulderousness to this one as well. So this is looking a little bit less smooth. And I'm liking it. I think I'm liking it. Now it's time for the big and scary land mass out the back. Is this too big? I feel like this could be too big. I mean, it will be epic. Like this, this would be mega with a capital M, E, G, and A. Even the exclamation mark that follows it would be capitalized somehow. Mm -hmm. Wait a second, what is going on down here? What is going on down here? There seems to be some end crystals. Who else has got- Oh, they might have bought my end crystals. Somebody's bought my end crystals. <laughs> what is going on here? The sign is designed to distract you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. That was, I was, I was expecting you to fly away. I thought you were flying away, so then I detonated it to try and kill myself. But you hadn't taken off. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what you were gonna do. I saw the obsidian for a second. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I did. I, oh, that was so. That was so perfect. <laughs> I, I, for some reason, in my head, you had jumped off. Like you were jumping off. I had. So, I had. I had. I had oh, jumped. Oh, you had. Okay. Okay. I had good. Yeah. Okay. I good. had actually jumped, but it, it caught me. You only need one to die. Oh yeah, they, these things are insane. Yeah. I mean, I like. Here's the thing: is I saw you jump off, so then I jumped are you sure off. off? <laughs> Did he kill himself? He killed himself. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> do, you, do you die again? You blew yourself. Oh my! Uh, Wait, I really on. hope. I really hope that we didn't lose any stuff in that. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you pick up all the stuff before you did that? I, ho I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! These these end crystals they don't mess around when it comes to entities, dude. They they are they are brutal. Mm -hmm. Oh no! <laughs> well, these end crystals are utterly ridiculous. Like they are 
they are so lethal. We have to be so careful. We we shouldn't be trusted. Why is it that we are the only ones that seem to have end crystals at this point in time? How many times is that going to be funny? I don't know, but it is, it is always absolutely hilarious. Because I mean, now I... we're just... We're just... <laughs> I mean, this is like... <laughs> I can see you holding obsidian. I'm, I'm a little... Like, I have no... Control. I can't place it because I don't have obsidian. Well, okay, yeah, I, 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 I could tell you one thing. You've um, you passed my game immediately. I started this new game called How Dumbo is Mumbo Jumbo. All right. And you, 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 I've, I've won. today, you are not Dumbo. I don't know, dude. I managed to... I genuinely... You jumped off. I jumped off at the same time, but then just detonated it on myself. <laughs> I mean, at least, at least it, it kind of caught you. You, but. you, you started a new thing, by the way. You, you have started a new thing. I am just going to sneak up behind you. Oh, and no. just it, 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 You've started something. It's just going to be explosions. All right, is oh, he, he is here. Maybe if we just place the end crystal, he could never get rid of it. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no, wait. Oh, wait. No, oh, no. Uh, I, I hear you now. What? Well, there's, no. Look, 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 there's, there's actually nothing he can do to stop oh. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, I guess oh, you, you can never There's misclick. Nothing. You can There's never misclick up here. right next to my bed. <laughs> is it, if you right you click it, does it explode? No, like no, oh, I would gosh. not touch this, Korean. This is... <sighs> Just so you know, I had nothing to do with this. The, the only reason he I'm He had here, everything to do with this. Because... The guy that made all of the end crystals. I'm, just because I sell the end crystals doesn't mean I'm responsible for what people do with them. <laughs> like, I had no idea this was going to happen. The reason I'm here... He gave me the idea! Yeah, but the reason I'm here is because Grian tried to blow me up with end crystals and failed, and then I blew him up, and now now here oh, I, I am. Say, yeah. I was going to say, I saw in chat that there was some, some explosions yeah. happening. Yeah. So you're blaming Grian for that. Oh, 100%. Okay. Oh, <laughs> What's happened to his dogs? <laughs> took me down to four hearts. Oh no, his dogs! <laughs> Did you hurt my dogs? I don't know. <laughs> something's happened. He <laughs> spooked them. <laughs> so, oh, so... No. Is oh, it? Man. I just wanted to turn on the down line. To four hearts. Oh, <laughs> there's good. no damage. <laughs> yeah, no, I got the water up in time. That was perfect. I mean, that would have been chaos, Grant. I'm kind of glad. Oh, oh no, his dogs! Did you hurt my dogs? I don't know, something's <laughs> happened. <laughs> he spooked them. So, Wait, they're, they're upside down. Is oh it? man, that took me down to four hearts. Oh, there's no good. damage. Yeah, no, I got the water up in time, that was perfect. I mean, that would have been chaos, Grin. I'm kind of glad like, uh, that all his yeah, valuable stuff chest. is in here. <laughs> that could have been we, bad. We have to be quite careful. All explosions aside, the framework is done. And even though it is very difficult to get a sense of what it looks like, I really like the proportions and I really like the scale. I think that's gone incredibly well. If I imagine this solidified with boulders and then the overgrowth and then the water running down through the middle, I genuinely think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. And look how much space we're going to have down at the bottom here for a base. Like, because of course, I'm going to have some bits of my base on the outside of the structure, but the majority is going to be on the inside. And this is, this is a pretty big area that we have to play with here. Mm -hmm. Next trees are look positively tiny. I mean, look, she's huge. And yet look at this thing. And also I just want to remind you that this is tier one of my three tier plan. I am terrified. <laughs> I'm absolutely terrified. Especially because doing this, just doing the outline, has used a whole shulker box of stone. I don't know how. I, I don't know how. It, it's, I, it's completely baffled me. I'm so baffled. I don't know where it's all gone. I guess I did build pretty much every single element multiple times, tearing it down again and rebuilding it. But the scary thing is, I imagine I'm going to do that with a lot of the filling in as well. Mm-hmm. We're gonna need a lot more stone than I think I've already gathered. I think we should probably go out for another few hours. Resource gathering complete. Surely this has to be enough. 
Surely we have got enough stone and deep slate now to actually construct this thing. If we run out, I'm going to be amazed. I mean, just think how much material has had to be displaced in this area here. I mean, look at this place. All of this has been removed. Oh, I've forgotten some diamonds. <laughs> that would have been upsetting. There is absolutely hmm. no way that we are going to run out of stone. I'm feeling confident that we have enough. I think we should be able to construct this thing. So let's get started. And... Okay, well that's me getting started. The rest will be completed in the next Hermitcraft episode. And now that I'm looking at this thing, I don't know if it's enough stone. You know, I really don't know if it's enough stone. I would say that's enough base related stuff now. Let's move on to another project. But first, let's see how wildly successful we are. Okay, that's pretty successful. Not that successful. That's not going well. This is going well. Nine diamonds there. Maybe not people bad. really let's like logs. I'm assuming that was all green. Okay, cool. This is going well. 15 diamonds and all of the diamonds that we gathered in that little resource gathering session as well We are not doing too badly here. Anyway other project despite my sudden and unexpected decision to kill both me and Grian with an end crystal earlier I am a man of honor and I generally only kill people if it's in a standoff where we've both agreed to the rules We've agreed to the conditions and the best and fastest person wins I plan on doing many more of these standoffs in fact I have a whole outfit prepared But I want to make sure that I'm not going to lose I want to guarantee that I will always win and the way that I'm going to do that is through training And the way that I'm going to train is using redstone It's time to take this to the highest level So of course it all starts with the furnace that is our timer But then I'm going to have automated stick deployment into the furnace so this is to make it really easy for me to be able to use this machine. I can deploy sticks into the furnace with the press of a button. Now in a real end crystal standoff, I believe this is where my end crystal would be, which means that I would be stood around about here. Now obviously because this is just for training, I'm not going to have my end crystal there instead. This is going to be my button where I activate the training exercise. Now it's time to start measuring our first training metric, which is reaction time between the furnace turning off and the crystal being destroyed by my egg. So we've got ourselves a little RS Snorlatch right here, one item on the inside, and the output from that RS Snorlatch runs into this redstone. I have no idea right what he's here, talking which about. Is then going to go through into a dropper and a chest. This is where my opponent's end crystal is going to be. This is what I'm going to be shooting at from over there. And we can detect the explosion of this end crystal, making use of this observer right here, which we can then run back through into our RS Norlatch. And that should be everything. So that is the timer for length of time between the furnace turning off and the end crystal being destroyed. But there is an extra thing that we can do in a standoff, which is the defense block placement. And I wanna make sure that I'm quick on those as well. So that involves the creation of a second RS Norlatch, which is going to be going over here, which then runs out into another redstone clock, which is going to be over here. And then that's going to go into a dropper once again. And that dropper outputs into a chest, and that is going to tell us how long it's taken. So the longer I take to destroy the end crystal, the more items will be in that chest. And the longer I take to place down the block here, the more items will be in that chest. So we are aiming to get as few items as possible in each one of these chests. That is the goal of my training because then I can take what I've learned here into an actual standoff and absolutely obliterate the competition. This idea is totally stupid, isn't it? But I can promise you it, it is. won't seem quite as stupid in the next standoff. All right, all of this training will start to make sense. Also, did I mention I've had a whole outfit made for all these standoffs? I kind of have to be the best if I'm the one rocking the standoff outfit. I can't turn up in all the gear and then just get destroyed by everyone. Okay, everything's loaded. I think it's time for a test. My eggs are primed and ready. I've got the blocks that I'm meant to place. Okay, so I need to switch from my, my clear hand to the eggs, then place the block. This is scary. Oh, that was fast! <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm, I don't know if I need training. So you managed to get five in there. How fast was our shot? Five as well. That is, that's pretty good. That is, I, I'm proud of myself there. That was quick. That was fast. Ooh. Oh, man. Whoa. Ooh. That was way too much fun. And after a significant amount of training runs, I managed to get a maximum speed of four on this chest here. 
and five on this one. Five seemed to be as quick as I could possibly go, no matter how hard I tried. But believe you me, I will be continuing my training because, to be honest, it's hilariously good fun. And the next showdown, the next standoff that occurs on the Hermitcraft server, the other person's not even gonna know what's happened. All right, they're just gonna blip out of existence. That furnace will turn off and that'll be the last thing they see. They will just disappear into the ether. They will be reduced to a pink mist as my end crystal just passes through them like their butter. Peace, love, and plants, baby. Peace, love, and plants. That actually reminds me, I've been meaning to check up on how many potatoes this farm has generated. Oh, oh. Oh, that's, that's a lot of potatoes. Oh, we built, we filled, we filled the whole thing with potatoes. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> you guys have been working like triple time over time. What are you doing? All right, well, I definitely need to do something with these. I mean, I know I'm potato boy, but this is a lot of potatoes even for me. How are the potato vendors doing? I mean, we've got a diamond and some <laughs> wheat seeds. This one, I don't have much hope for this one. It has seven baked potatoes in it. <laughs> Somebody's paid for potatoes with potatoes. I feel like actually that could have been me. Hey, this one's got one diamond as well. This is not bad. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> The potato vendors have been an unexpected success story. Okay, we need to restock these things, but I need to come up with a better way of smelting up the potatoes. <laughs> I'm actually in shock. I was not expecting that in the slightest. This is fantastic. All right, okay. I'm going to do some thinking. I'm going to come up with some cool ways to smelt potatoes in a way that looks good and also is efficient. I think it's going to be pretty sweet. But anyway, <laughs> that is all going to be coming in the next few episodes of Hermit Graph. We've got a lot of plans. We've got a wow, the episode's too. already over. It's be very busy. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya. And I just want to say, I, I can't get over the success that I've had this season. I mean, <laughs> can you believe it? The entirety of Hermitcraft Season 7, I barely make a diamond, alright? And then Season 8 comes around, and I'm overflowing with them. You know, I'm, <laughs> Tater Vendors are doing well. You know, about my, my Harmless Harvest is flying. I'm a, I'm a true businessman. <laughs> Yeah, like, he's making a lot more diamonds with his shops this season than he was last season. Like, it was pretty much unheard of for him to get diamonds for his shops last season. Uh, anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please go mumbo-jumbo some support. Um, like, you can like and subscribe um, to him as well. Um, he really does deserve every bit of support he gets. He's an amazing content creator. And if you really like um, this reaction video and my style of videos, um, please consider subscribing, um, as I do upload, um, every day between Monday and Friday, um, and I do post reaction videos, um, often as well. Um, but with that being said, I hope you guys have a nice rest of the day, and I will see you next time. Have a nice day, guys.